So you can do this a couple ways. You can use your voltmeter on volts, or you can just use a, a test light, either one. I prefer my voltmeter. So we'll use the uh, test light first. I just have the other end on a good ground, which is a, a bolt. I do have the ignition switch on. see the light so we'll go and test all of these cooling pan so, okay so all these other ones turn on whenever the key is on so I'll turn the key off so we still have voltage to this one with the key off We don't have any power with the key off. And then we'll turn the key on. And we have power. Okay. Also, if you look at the box, it says 20 amps accessories. So cool, cool. So we will tap into this circuit here. So something else that would be important to find out is how much voltage is coming here um, if this is like a step down from 12 volts to four and a half volts or something like that we know we had 20 amps most likely it's going to be 12 volts but we need to double check and make sure because if we run our voltmeter to this and this circuit is only supposed to have seven and a half volts or you know whatever then it's going to give us a faulty reading. So we'll go ahead and test that now. Make sure we turn the key on. Okay, sorry, battery died. So, 1193. Like I said, that battery is dead. We'll do the other side, 1193. Um, and this probably goes to 12 volt outlet. So if you look up under here, here's the uh, auxiliary power, what a cigarette lighter, whatever you want to call it. Um, black wire, red wire. Just pull this red wire off. And we'll verify. And we'll turn the key on. Right there. So, there we go. So we can tap into this wire here, um, and that'll that'll work as well for power. Okay, so I got a spade connector, and that fits in there right nicely. I guess we'll put it in that way. Uh, fits in there good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up three different wires into this one terminal. One is going to go right back into the outlet and then two I'm going to prep for the voltage meter for the voltage meter and the coolant temperature sensor meter. So let's go do that. I think the one going back to the outlet will do this pretty thick gauge stuff. The other I'm going to use this 18 gauge wire um, it is it's really thin and there's they're LEDs and they're not pulling out a whole lot of amperage so we'll be fine with that so I'll pull out I don't know probably a foot of this and uh, maybe I don't know six inches of this I'd, I'd rather have too much than too little so and it'll give us some wiggle room and stuff so hang on a second let me get that out um, and then what we'll do is we'll put the female uh, connector on this to plug in. And then I'm not sure how we're going to connect the, sorry. I don't know, I'm not sure quite how I'm going to connect the other one. Um, but we'll cross that bridge once we get there. So, all right, hang on. So 
So that's way more than enough. I love these. These actually work. I've had some that's kind of knock off. Yeah, they suck. They wind up breaking a lot of the. Let's see. Just like that. And probably won't be able to see inside there, but. There's no no broken pieces. So, do the same to this end. And then also what's cool is that you can adjust how deep you want. If you wanted to cut more of it off, you can just put it to that. So works good. So in order to sneak those wires in there. I'm going to have to make this a, a longer cut or a strip, whatever you want to call it. I'll put those twisties together. <laughs> twisties together. I'll solder those. That'll be one piece. Slide that in with the other one and hopefully we'll be good to go. So let me get back again. So here's how I've been soldering lately. Get your wires, dip it in your flux real good. That's just enough to hold it. And you get your soldering iron, or your soldering, your solder. I've been using a torch. I have a soldering iron, but it takes way too long. But you just need a real light. Real light flame. And heat it up. Just get that real nice and hot. And that solder will actually suck down inside. Oops. Okay. So this is good. This is called tinning your wire. So there we go. Technically we can plug this in. To the so what we're going to do now is we're going to solder these. Okay, so, okay, so, see you're out there. That's where I am. Uh, what the heck is wrong with this thing? So here's just a uh, 10 millimeter bolt unplugged, or I uh, undid, put the ground on right here. We essentially made a wiring harness. I guess um, the good thing is is that this is already um, protected it has the fuse 
in line with this. So if anything happens to this or any of the gauges, it'll blow that fuse before it messes up anything else. So hang on a second, let me plug this in real quick. Sorry about the lighting. The good thing is it's not on. Showing 11.9 and 104, <laughs> but you got to remember this one is not hooked up to the to the sensor, so it probably doesn't know what to read right now. Let's turn the lights on and see if the drops any. Yeah, drop a little bit. So. Uh, and you can see the little red light that just popped on because it went down below 11.4 oh look at it drop now so that again that's reading 11.9 and then what this is actually reading 11.82 it's a tenth of a volt off that's close enough for me so let's see Next thing we need to do, and this will probably be for tomorrow or something, is this right here. We'll need to drain a little bit of the coolant out, and then I get ready to put that uh, temp sensor in there. And then all you gotta do from there is we'll run another wire up to the green, just that green wire, and We'll be done. Then I will um, kind of tuck all of this wiring away and zip tie them up so they don't get pulled on or snugged or, or t snagged or anything like that. So uh, I, the next video I do will probably be with the pods. Um, I may have to mount the pods up here or something. I hope they'll fit here, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's how we get this far. That's that's the main that's the main part of it all. Uh, look for part two uh, coming up within the next few days. Hope this helps you out. Y'all comment, rate. Uh, again, do this at your own risk. What I am going to do with all the connections is come back through with some. Um, I forgot the name of it. It's not pipe joint compound. <laughs> ah, dielectric grease. Um, all the all the connections and all the fittings, uh, even the back of the wires, if I can't get to them, I'm going to stuff some of this uh, dielectric grease in there. Uh, what that does is it allows water, it, it helps prevent water getting into the connection. So um, this doesn't make a better connection because electricity cannot pass through this grease, but it helps keep out water and other stuff from getting into your connection and it also keeps it from um, helps keep it from corroding and if you have to plug in a switch or plug in and unplug it, it's a lubricant kind of thing too so it helps uh, helps with that as well so, so there you go guys y'all comment rate and like I said look for a part two and we'll finish this up we'll talk to you later thanks for watching see ya